Hello friends and family and welcome to the July 31st edition of the Crippling Anxiety Fireside Chat. Today I wanted to continue the conversation from yesterday about this idea of intuitive awareness and tacit knowledge and quickly expand on that with the idea uh, put forth by the authors of Altered Traits. Um, this is the book, Altered Traits. It's a pretty good book. Uh, if you are interested in the science of meditation, the hard science of meditation, this is more or less the only book available on the subject. Uh, unfortunately, um, the science of meditation has been bad, uh, to say the least. There are a lot of studies out there that really fall down in terms of scientific rigor and um, in terms of process. And the nice thing about altered traits is that it really uh, is hard on these scientific studies. It forces them into the light and it says, uh, we, here we've looked at all these different studies and these are the things that are wrong with the studies which are bad for varying uh, degrees of badness. And these are the studies that are actually good. And this is what makes a good scientific study on meditation. And the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of historical studies on meditation, by historical I mean from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, that they often misunderstood the importance of very basic things like um, uh, double blind trials and things like this, but uh, more importantly in the specific domain is the idea that different meditation techniques bear very little resemblance to one another in terms of how they are executed or what their results may be. The reason that the title of the book is Altered Traits is because uh, it's a little play on words with altered states. So early meditation research was often very focused on this idea of altered states of mind. And it was often paired with research in psychedelics, uh, call them hallucinogens, um, and the altered states that psychedelic drugs would produce and the altered states that meditation can produce and often does produce uh, when you take it seriously. And the authors of Altered Traits basically say that's not that important and it's not that interesting. Uh, the altered states of mind you can achieve through meditation are not the value of meditation. The value of meditation is the altering of personality traits, the altering of mental traits, becoming a different person intentionally improving yourself through uh, techniques which uh, employ um, or uh, manipulate neuroplasticity. And this is worthwhile. This is a, a worthwhile bit of research, but it's a, a worthwhile concept to explore. This idea that you're not meditating just for Tuesday if you're meditating on Tuesday you're meditating for Wednesday and for Thursday and for Friday because what you are trying to do is to alter the way that you are, the traits. Um, and we would often think of these traits as being inherent. Uh, this person is kind, this person is mean. Uh, this person is gentle, this person is rough. And um, if you can alter these traits such that you are kinder and gentler, then these activities are worthwhile. Um, and this concept of uh, tacit knowledge or intuitive awareness that we were speaking about yesterday comes into play uh, in the way that the book describes how meditation affects meditation. And the phrasing they use is the after becomes the before for the next during. <laughs> and what this means is what happens after this meditation, 
the trait change you experience through meditation is then the state before your next meditation inherently because it's now a part of you. Um, and during that next meditation, um, this thing, whatever you've learned, uh, unconsciously, subconsciously, as part of your body, part of your mind um, has been altered, um, that it has become a part of you and it has become a part of your meditation practice. So it is now the before state for uh, during the next meditation. And same goes for that meditation and the next meditation which follows it and so on and so forth. The research, uh, the kind of keystone research, which has been highlighted many, many times and which the authors lean on um, to, uh, to frame this argument that they make is the research that they did on very, very high level meditators, um, completely secluded monks who meditate in caves all day long. Uh, and these monks uh, were put under um, brain scans and investigated and it was found that even when the monks were not actively meditating that their state of being was completely unlike what uh, normal <laughs> what a normal person looked like uh, when examined in the same way and it was that their default state had been completely altered. And so it could be understood that when they move into their next meditative state, um, that their default has moved where they're going to explore in the meditative state completely. So now their default is completely different and their meditative state is completely different. So for you and I, often our meditative state is we're trying very hard to work on this intuition. We're bringing our attention back to the breath. We're bringing our attention back to the breath over and over again. We go through this exercise as gently as possible, as patiently as possible, but it's very difficult and it's quite a struggle. And what they found is that for these monks, uh, if we're discussing anapan meditation and for simplicity's sake, we can um, use that that their attention would simply remain with the breath. It, would, it was there by default. And that they were alert, they were attentive, um, but that their attention was immediate. And their reactions to things, uh, it's not as though they were non-existent. They were not like a stone <laughs> with no emotion and no response um, and no physiology. Um, they would react, but they would not react as much as a non-meditator or, or a beginner meditator like us. Um, and they had a sort of tail um, to their reaction, which was much shorter. So they would react and then they would go back to normal. Whereas we, if we feel that we've uh, been hurt physically or emotionally, we tend to react and then we have this long, slow tail um, where we, if we're hurt emotionally, we might be hurt inside for days and days together, weeks. Um, and the monks would not respond this way. They would very quickly return back to uh, a base state. They were much more stable emotional response, even though they would still respond, they would still react to stimuli. Um, I think that this both book is um, extremely worth your time if you're looking for serious meditation literature and you want to learn more about the field of meditation in general and in particular if you have a lot of time for reading a book while you are stuck at home uh, you could do much worse than Altered Traits so I highly recommend it. I will uh, leave you with that and I hope you are all taking care of yourselves, your family, your friends, friends of friends. I hope you've had a good July and I hope that August 
uh, continues to go well for you and that we can all get through this together. Take care of yourselves. I'll talk to you tomorrow on August 1st. Goodbye.